welcome to our time of worship. Today we are going to consider the question, where are you standing? To help us we're going to look at the prophet Ezekiel, an Old Testament prophet who was exiled to Babylonia as a result of the surrender of Jerusalem in the year 597 BC. After approximately five years in exile, Ezekiel started to prophesy and challenge his listeners. Much of his message was difficult to understand, yet he remained faithful to his calling as a prophet. It wasn't until very much later, in the latter part of his ministry, did some clarity come to his message, and we may recall his words about the watchtower, or the watchman, and the valley of the dry bones. The passage for our consideration comes from the early part of Ezekiel's ministry, where he introduced the image of a breach in the defensive wall of a city. And he asks the question, who will stand in the gap? Who will defend this and prevent the invaders pouring through the walls? Let me just read that verse to you from Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. This is what it says. I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so that I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. But I found no one. This image and phrase is often used when, uh, re when people are requesting prayerful support or intercessions for those who are in difficulty. Who will stand in the gap? And who will pray for them? Ezekiel in this passage unfortunately indicates that no one could be found. And the nation endured the consequences as a result. Well, that phrase is, yes, used when people are seeking prayers on behalf of another. Yet it's not always used in that context. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, tells of his conversion to Christianity whilst he was at university. But he also gives an insight that someone prayed for him, someone stood in the gap from before he was born in the hope that he would become a disciple of Christ. Standing in the gap is something that we all can do. It's a gift that costs us nothing but can make a huge difference in an individual's life. I invite us then to just watch and to listen to the Archbishop's testimony. Take a note of his words regarding <coughs> standing in the gap. And that then will be followed by that lovely songster piece, Someone Prayed For Me. I'm back in Cambridge back to the days where, obviously I worked very hard, but I did spend a lot of time on the river rowing. I last coxed about 40 years ago. If you believe in prayer, I suggest you say one now. Are you ready? Go! Nick Hills and I were students together at Cambridge, and we recently met to visit the college we were both at and take a tour. Hi, Nick. Hello, Justin. Very nice to see you after and so you. long. We headed over to Nick's room in one year when he was at college. A transforming moment happened. A life-changing moment. May, may I go in? Yes, there we go. Why don't you lead the way? All right. Because you used to live here. Thank you very much for letting us no disturb problem. you. You're very kind. We came back here, yeah, I super. think, about 10 -ish. On October the 12th, 1975, just before midnight, that having spent time talking and sharing speaking together and I realized that I was at a point of decision about life and my life was going to go one of two ways and I prayed a very simple prayer saying Lord Jesus come into my life I don't know anything about you but come into my life and he came in something changed and has stayed changed from 
then on with all the ups and downs and me trying to run away and good times in the life in my life and really bad ones and that started with you just as another undergraduate very simply encouraging me to look at who Jesus was I, I just can't imagine how different my life would have been that's the extraordinary thing well the next morning you gave me this Bible you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Cambridge, 1975. That was the verse that was the page that was open when I became Archbishop of Canterbury, when I was installed at Canterbury Cathedral in the St. Augustine copy of the Gospels that St. Augustine bought with him in 597. They said, do you want it open anywhere in particular? I said, yes, I John 15, 16. From that moment. Isn't that extraordinary? That's terrific. It's a beautiful Bible. I've used it for years. Yes, and I yeah. exactly like it, and uh, I use it also day by day. When I think through my journey of faith, Nick wasn't the only person involved. In fact, far from it. I later learned that there was a particular person who'd prayed for me every week since he knew that I was on the way, since I was conceived, that I might become a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. I can't tell you how grateful I am to them. What an extraordinary, faithful and loving gift that was. But that's a gift that we can all afford. It's not a gift that any of us is unable to give. Who could you give that gift to?
do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Well, thank you for sharing that passage of Scripture with us. It's a passage of Scripture that describes Paul's, when he was writing to the church at Corinth, outlining the current challenges he was facing. But he also emphasised the value of the people who stand in the gap for him. What does he say in verse 11? As you help us by your prayers, and then he continues describing that, and says that they and his success was an answer to the prayers of many. Now we've all been in those situations when news arrives about the dilemma that another person is finding themselves in. And we kind of automatically say, you know, you were in my thoughts, you were in my prayers. What in effect we are saying is, I am prepared to stand in the gap. I am prepared to pray on your behalf. I am prepared to seek God's intervention for you. As that song, or the song that sang to us says, saying what I could not say. Scripture, you know, is littered with such examples. We've already seen Paul's situation being prayed for by the Corinthian church. But we also remember Moses in Exodus, Exodus 32, who stands in the gap and prays for his people before God as they had disobeyed God by building the golden calf in the wilderness and causing the wrath of God upon them. Moses pleads for God's mercy upon them. We know about Abraham in Genesis 18 who intercedes, who prays for the people of Sodom. Stephen prayed for those who were stoning him as we read in Acts 7. And of course we know that the Lord Jesus prayed for those who were actually carrying out the crucifixion. Those immortal words, Father forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Yes, there are situations when we are called to stand in the gap. But there are also situations, there are also, there are also people that we are called to have a long-term position in that gap. Do you call the um, Archbishop's words about the person who prayed for him every day through his rebellious days, through the hurtful days, as well as through the joyous days? He mentioned, the Archbishop mentioned St. Augustine, did he not? And we know the story about St. Augustine's mother, Monica, who prayed every day for her son. She described him as a retrobate son, a son who was a rebel, a son who defied his mother's faith. Yet she continued to pray for him. And when she reached the age of 56, she says that Augustine came to faith. Augustine writes in his confessions about his mother and he says it was she who wept over me so that I might live in God's sight. We're going to share together in a Salvation Army song. It's song 759. And there are many people who we perhaps today wish to pray for. They could be friends, they could be family, they could be neighbours, they could be people that perhaps no one else knows. And as we sing this song, I trust indeed that we will stand in the gap for them. So let's sing together, 
Holy Father, in thy mercy, hear our anxious prayer. Lord, this day, I thank you that we're able to come before you in worship, in a safe and comfortable environment. I ask your prayers for those who are in and the situations in our prayer book this week. The strength, healing, comfort and reassurance. You know each individual prayer. I ask too that you will be in each situation, Lord, which may be laid on each of our hearts. You know the plans for each of your children's lives. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Faithful prayers reflect our willingness to stand in the gap. And we stand in the gap when times are good, when times are bad. And even in those times which we perhaps feel are mundane, our prayers need to be directed to those individuals and situations who have been laid upon our hearts and we are willing to intercede on their behalf. We are willing to stand in the gap. Timothy writes in his first letter, in chapter 2, he says these words, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people. We're going to share in our next song and our next song considers just some of those whom we may be called to stand in the gap for. Song 792 in the Salvation Army songbook says, Thank you Lord for these quiet moments in this rather busy day. Help me not to waste a moment as I come to think and pray.
Let's sing together. So I ask the simple question, who are you standing in the gap for today? You know, I have my own personal list. I have a list for my family, for my friends, who I pray for, but also I have a list that reflects my current appointment. Many of you will know that currently my uh, responsibility is as a, the uh, chaplain to the members of the Senev. And I stand in the gap for each of them each day. Um, since uh, COVID has come around, uh, it's been very difficult to actually physically see these individuals. And so what I do, I pray for each of the, the members each day and I have a little a card with the old picture with their pictures on and every day I pray for them in a specific way and make I click a little note regarding the prayer that I have made for them as I stand in the gap reflecting their responsibilities at this time you see it is a time of confusion it is a time of uncertainty it is a time of massive responsibility and that has fallen upon the shoulders of our Senev members. All of them, none of them, were ever re elected on the basis of how they would deal with the pandemic. And they are individuals who have their own responsibilities, they have their own families, they have their own cares, they have their own concerns, they have their own health issues just like you and I. And so my uh, task, I believe, is to stand in the gap on their behalf as they represent our nation and the responsibilities that they hold. You know, it's important that we do pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. Our first appointment was to the little village in North Wales of Hrost and Hrigog, and there was a, a little Salvation Army Corps there, still functioning. And uh, there was a, a chapel in the town that once had its minister called the Reverend Lewis Valentine. And he wrote uh, a song, a prayer, which is known as Gwethi Dros Cymru, which is the prayer for Wales. And these are the words that he penned. For Wales, our land, O oh Father, hear our prayer. This blessed vineyard granted to our care. May you protect her always faithfully and prosper her with all truth and purity. For your son's sake, who bought us with his blood, O oh, make our Wales in your own image, Lord. 
O come the day when o'er our barren land reviving winds blow sent from God's own hand as grace pours down on parched and arid sand we will bear fruit for Christ by his command come with one voice and gentle vigour sing the virtues of our gentle Lamb and King. Lewis Valentine, Reverend Lewis Valentine, wrote those passionate words, um, very often sung to the tune of Finlandia, and it's a, a prayer for our land. We are going to consider our land. We're going to consider those who are responsible for leading us at this time. There's a song by Tom Ingalls which is, fits in with the idea of standing in the gap. And he sings this song and as he comes to the conclusion of the song he makes a prayer, a prayer for our land. So let's listen as we hear these words together. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of their nation. Those who will rise up and pray. So thank you for sharing with us this day. I trust that you will not only be challenged to continue to stand in the gap for others in these days, but that you too will be a recipient of other people's prayers. We're going to conclude our worship together with a benedictory song. Now this song is often thought of to be used just for funeral services when we say goodbye to our loved ones. And yet, as I looked at the words of the verses, I recognized that these are lovely prayers that we can pray for and over those whom we are caring for and concerned about at this time. And so as we listen, and as we conclude our time of worship together, may the benediction of the Lord be with us as we pray over each other, may God indeed be with you at this time. 
Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide upon you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet Till we meet